Okay, I'm going to start. It's 11 o'clock. Um, and I'm, I'm a bit millennial here, Andrew, wearing a, a cap. And you'll see why when you see the words there. Okay. Okay. Right. You're here because uh, you want to change for the better. And it starts with what you think about. Dr. Joe Dispenser says, thoughts lead to choices, which then lead to actions or behavior, uh, which create experiences, which produce emotions, which affect our thoughts. Okay. Now, a person has 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and 90% of these thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before. Same thoughts will lead to the same choices. Same choices will lead to the same behaviors. Same behaviors create the same experiences and the same experiences produce the same emotions. So what we are trying to do in the next uh, few weeks is to meditate on new words which will enable you to have new thoughts. And we are studying the book Aspire, Discovering Your Purpose Through the Power of Words. It's a book by Kevin Hall. And in this book, it contains 11 words. And Kevin shows us how uh, these words will become touchstones in personal development and in business. And how you can use these words as, as building blocks for success and, and inner, inner peace. That means you know that you're on the right track. Today's word is Pathfinder. Okay, Today's word is Pathfinder. And you see the word on my cap, Explore. Okay. So if you want to explore, you have to be a pathfinder. You have to find a way. Okay. Kevin Hall was introduced to a gentleman called Arthur Watkins. We're going to mention Arthur uh, a bit in the next few weeks. Okay. Arthur is a retired university professor of etymology, okay. etymology, which is a study of words. Kevin was introduced to Arthur. Okay. And so he calls Arthur, who is living in a retirement home. After he comes back from, from an overseas trip, he calls Arthur, uh, who's living in a retirement home, and he says, I was hoping we could spend some time together. Now, when he called him, it was nearly 8 p.m., but Arthur replied, I'm available tonight. Okay. So Kevin drives over there past 8 o'clock at night and sits down with Arthur, and Arthur says, Kevin, tell me about yourself. So Kelvin told him that he had spent 25 years teaching and developing leadership training. Arthur says, so let's start with the word leader. Since you've been doing leadership training, let's start with the word leader. Well, leader is a, an Indo-European word that's derived from two words. Li meaning path, okay? L-E-A meaning path and de meaning finder. So a leader is a pathfinder. Leaders find the path. They are the readers of the signs and the clues. They see and they show the way. Okay. So when they move forward, there's no sign, you know. They find the signs, they find the clues. So being a leader means finding the path. But before you can help someone else find the path, you must know yours. Okay. So you've got a company's mission statement. Uh, you need to have uh, your own mission statement. Okay. Uh, and so, so I have my own mission statement. Okay, and then we have the definite uh, purpose statement. Okay, uh, OTG call it the definite main purpose statement. Uh, we just short form it. We call it definite purpose statement. Okay, so you know that's why we have a definite purpose statement so that you know uh, what your path is. Okay, so before you can help someone else find the path, you must know your own path. Now I want to share with you a story uh, that Kevin shares about an incident when he was the scoutmaster. <clears throat> of a Boy Scout troop of 12 to 14 year olds. Okay. So he was a scout master of the troop and they were at summer camp. There were 15 uh, boys there uh, at summer camp. Now in preparing for the dreaded 20 mile hike, okay, which was a requirement for a particular scout merit badge, he was giving them a campfire talk, stalking them before the, before the event the next day. So he told them of a conference with Dr. Gerald Bell one of the world's most respected behavioralists, behavioralists okay, at the University of North Carolina. Now, Dr. Bell and coach Dean Smith had helped North Carolina win the national championships 
at a time when Michael Jordan was a freshman uh, on the team. Dr. Bell was their mind coach. Dean Smith was their, you know, their physical uh, sports coach. At the conference, Dr. Bell told the audience of a survey that he had made on the lives of 4,000 retired executives. Okay, the average age was about 70 years old. They were asked just one question. If you could live your life over again, what would you do differently? If you could live your life over again, what would you do differently? And the answer was, I should have taken charge of my life and set my goals earlier. Life isn't practice, it's a real thing. So the answer was, I sh should have taken charge of my life and set my goals earlier. Now, the next day on the 20 mile hike, as you expect, they were flagging his 20 miles. 20 miles is about 32 kilometers. Kevin challenged the Boy Scouts to go beyond the required 20 miles by doing an extra half mile to another lake and then back, making a total of 21 miles. He promised them the best steak dinner at the million dollar steakhouse. <laughs> Familiar terms for us who, who are in this business. Okay. Now, out of the 14 boys, there were 14 takers. And so Kevin and these four boys, they went ahead jogging. Several miles later at this turn off to that lake, two of them had a change of heart. They said, oh, they turned back. So he carried on with the remaining two. So they went there, half a mile, come back another mile. Now on the way back, they met a fit runner in his 50s who offered to accompany them to the end. It turns out that he's from the University of North Carolina. So Kevin asked him, you wouldn't happen to know Dr. Gerald Bell, would you? Well, I'm Dr. Gerald Bell. <laughs> the two scouts were stunned. And then they were delighted that their paths had actually uh, literally crossed. So as they ran back, Dr. Bell provided additional insights, details about his study. And he stressed the importance of taking charge of your life through goal setting. He basically repeated the conference there. So those scouts learned that plus a great lesson that when you go the extra mile, amazing things happen. Kevin Hall asked Dr. Bell what he thought were the chances of meeting on the trail on the very day he shared about his study with the scouts. What is the chance of meeting him on the, you know, maybe one in a trillion? But it did happen. And I'm saying it does happen. When we aspire to achieve our goals, each connection that we make leads to another, another, and another. And, you know, miracles happen. What we think are miracles, but no. It's, it's uh, the law of attraction and it's intention plus action and plus grace. So let me share with you some keys to pathfinding. Okay? Uh, Kevin says people who follow their truth path and purpose, they do five things. First, they are able to read the clues that guide them on their path. So when certain things come up, it's not by luck, you know. Okay, <laughs> It was there because you were looking for it, you were asking for it. Okay? So look out for clues. Okay. Sem number two, they're very clear about where they are going. So they don't get sidetracked. They don't get dis discouraged when, when the results, because this result is not where I'm going. That is where I'm going. It's clear. That's where I'm going. Okay. Number three, they recognize and they embrace their natural gifts. Okay. They recognize and they embrace their natural gifts. And I'm going to talk about this the following week about natural gifts. Okay. Um, if you're doing scroll three, you're talk it's talking about natural gifts. Okay. Number three, recognize and embrace the natu natural gifts. Number four, they're willing to sacrifice to make significant contributions. Okay. They're willing to sacrifice to make significant contributions. This is delayed gratification. And number five, they follow their bliss. Okay. That means they follow their passion. And as a result, they meet people on their path who have been placed there to guide them on their journey. So nothing happens by accident. But you've got to be clear about what you want so that God can put the right people into your path. Now, Kevin Hall um, shares his own journal thoughts. So in this book, every chapter, he, he, he's, he's a great journaler. He has some thoughts. Okay. He shared about the great adventure writer Robert Louis Stevenson, who said, All through my boyhood and youth, I've always kept two books in my pocket, one to read and one to write in. Robert Louis Stevenson did that. He always had two books, one to read and one to write in. I have a unique path, 
and the book I write in is the map of that special path. Okay. So you have a path. What you write in is actually the map of that path. It's a record of my own heroic journey. It's where I've been and it's where I'm going. In the old French, journey means journey is a, is a French word for a day's travel. So journal means a day. I will write in and review my journal on a daily basis. Now, as I look back in my own notes, Huiswan actually shared exactly this uh, sometime in 2018 when she was talking about the journal. Okay. Uh, she was sh sharing what she learned from Kevin's book. So uh, let, me, let me just carry on what uh, Kevin says. By setting aside regularly reflection time, I find joy in the journey. So as, as he reflects, he finds joy. He, as Huiswan said, he relives the experience again when he, when, 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 when he writes it down. I will take just 1% of each day, approximately 15 minutes, and use it to reflect on the past 24 hours and contemplate on the possibilities that lie ahead. Just 1% to capture 100%. Kevin Hall says four things need to be recognized daily. Okay, four things. Number one, people who appear on my path to help me to fulfill my purpose. Two, actions taken on opportunities. Three, thoughts that help me create a life of meaning and significance. And number four, moments of happiness and bliss. People, actions, Thoughts, happiness. P A T H they spells the word path. So why do I personally uh, develop the discipline of a daily journal? And for me, I use the daily email uh, on, on a daily basis and then a, a weekly journal and a monthly journal. Why do I develop this discipline? Okay. Because I want to help people find their path. I want to help people become pathfinders. So this is about being a pathfinder through journaling because journaling is a powerful, practical and duplicable tip to empower people to improve their lives. And that's what we want to do. We want to have something that we can duplicate so that we can help many, many people help many, many people. Okay, so that's the word pathfinder. Okay. Now, tomorrow we have Tuesday tips uh, as usual uh, from Wiswan. Thank you very much. Okay, see you all guys. Have a have a great start of this week. Bye bye.